Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Josh Mason, your host for this evening. And uh, I have an idea of what I'm going to talk about. I had this one spark of an idea, but I don't know where it's going to go. This is as much of a surprise for me as it is for you. Um, you may notice that I'm sitting. I haven't been sitting in a long time. You probably haven't seen a video of me filmed sitting in a long time. Sometimes I'll sit on this exercise ball, but even that is a struggle. Anyway, I've been making very good progress with my back injury in the past 10 days or so. And I want to talk about that. Um, this back injury, then I'm going to make a full video devoted to the back injury at some point, but the video I want to make now stems around the idea uh, that this is another journey. It really reminds me of my mercury and my, my depression and my panic attacks. It reminds me of that journey in, in a way that I can see how the journey brings us closer to truth and closer to a deeper version of ourselves and, 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 and to a deeper understanding of how the body works. I've spent the past 11 months diving deep with spinal health and posture and exercises, stretches and massage and all kinds of different therapies. My room is covered. Every single freaking item I have in this apartment has to do with my back injury. Aside from books and food and some other things, everything I have is carefully designed or purchased for the back injury. I had an L5-S1 disc herniation, five millimeter disc herniation, and it was, it's, been, it's been a serious life-changing injury. It's been a life-changing journey. But I see so clearly how these journeys are amazing for me, amazing for, uh, for my, my, what I do for a living, and my soul somehow orchestrates these things um, for me to learn more about the human body and to learn more about healing and recovery and, and optimization. So um, let's move into, that's just a little bit of a background. I'll, I'll dive deeper into my back injury in another video. But one thing that hit me along this path was that 10 days ago I found this thing called foundation training and uh, I came across it on the internet diving into research searching for a local practitioner that could help me out I found a chiropractor slash foundation trainer all in one combo went to him twice already have noticed a dramatic improvement already and super super excited to dive super deep into this foundation training and uh, the thing that stuck out to me was that a lot uh, uh, in the past 11 months of suffering, yeah, suffering is not the right word of going through some deep shit when it comes to my back. And of course the emotional issues that come along with sometimes not being able to walk many times having to cancel trips. I've had to cancel three New York trips and an LA trip and I couldn't, I was going to teach a retreat in LA and I couldn't do it. Uh, on a very, very, in a, during a very bad week. And all the emotional stuff that comes with that of like, shit, like, you know, I can't live my life. Uh, in those 11 months, I had two different people told me about foundation training. Okay. Two different people. One of these people told me about it nine months ago. And I didn't, it just went in one ear out the other, or maybe I went on the website. I don't even know if I went on the website. I just, it was just another, oh, this thing, foundation training, you know, there's so many different products and services and, and athletic uh, corners, all of these different corners of the, the market that, that, that people, uh, you know, there's all of these new words that are coming in neurofeedback and biolinguistic programming and this and that and this and then all of this. And I just, it just, this stuff, I don't enjoy most of the time researching that type of stuff. I like searching inward. I like 
connecting to the cosmos, connecting to spirits and, and I love researching about detox, but I don't even really dive deep into the science. I like intuitive research when it comes to detoxification. I like hearing that person's words who recommends a supplement to me and feeling where their words come from and feeling the space of consciousness where, we, where they make a recommendation from or um, looking at that person's state of health, right? So I get pings about when I do my detox research and this was going to be a whole separate video, but fuck it, I'll put it in this video. I do, I do intuitive research. You know, there are some people who study the science. Great. We need those people. Not me. I get a ping about a supplement. A person will mention a supplement and I'm like, I get a ping about it. Like, Ooh, that person has something interesting. That person is onto some interesting path. Let me know. Let me see what they're up to. And then I find that supplement and then I do research on that supplement and I start hearing all these stories of people and I just get a ping about it. Like helpful or not helpful something to pursue, something not to pursue. And then of course the ultimate knowledge comes from taking it myself and giving it to and recommending it to clients and seeing how they react. Of course, myself first, but, but there's an intuitive, there's an intuitive process with how I, how, how I do that research uh, and how I've come across what I figure in my being to be truths when it comes to, to health and detoxification. I feel like I've landed on some deep truths. So similarly with this back injury stuff is I'm learning how there are these things that come in that hold weight that hold, that are like worthy of checking out. And, 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 I had these people give me these recommendations and for whatever reason, I just, it didn't click for me. Maybe it wasn't the right time. I wasn't emotionally ready for it. Maybe I had to suffer for all of these months. And, and I said suffer again, but uh, I, I don't like that word because I really wasn't suffering. Um, uh, struggle for all of these months um, f and, and, in order to be open to that idea, right? Similarly, people need to suffer or struggle for years on their detox journey before they would be open to the idea of taking a fucking binder like charcoal before they take DMS, DMSA or DMPS chelation therapy, right? So, so in any case, it didn't register for me when these people recommended it to me. And I learned another thing. Why didn't it register for me? There could have been the emotional reasons. It could have been that I had to struggle all this time, but also it was the person who sent me the recommendation that didn't click for me. Why? Because they hadn't been through the same injury. It's like my default, and maybe this is more than just me, which is why I'm talking about it, is that my default is if that person hasn't gone through what I'm going through, I don't really care what they say. There's just this default thing that's at play of like grasping, searching for a person who's underwent the same process and then you can trust them. And I'm learning there's so much here. This, this subject is so juicy. It's like, who do we trust? I think we trust people who we can relate to. Like I think it, it left to our own devices without the conditioning of, of believing a doctor or listening to a doctor, I believe that an average person would actually listen to Joe Schmo on YouTube or Josh Mason on YouTube versus a doctor if, they're, if that individual relates to me and has gone through a similar journey or is going through a similar journey that I went through. I believe left to our own devices, we trust and want to give ourselves to, and, and give ourselves in, a, in an energetic way, give ourselves to an individual who can hold it, right? A doctor can't hold you simply because he's read more textbooks or studied for a longer period of time in school. A person who can hold us is a person who has went through something and overcome it and is now on the other side waving their lantern in that maze saying, come this way, no, 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 come this way, no, 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 you're over there, you're going the wrong way there, buddy, come this way. And, and you know, so, so we end up trusting the Joe Schmoes on YouTube more than we trust doctors. 
and this is just what's happening in the world, because going through an issue, in my opinion, is infinitely more power th powerful than researching it, studying it, or even treating clients, right? Because doctors have amazing plethora of experience when it comes to treating patients, but I believe going through one's journey on our own health is more powerful than our relationship to clients or relationship to patients or our data collection on clients, right? Which is what a lot of doctors do, right? They'll, they'll have thousand clients and they'll say, this is helpful. It's helped 600 of my clients. And, and in my mind, I'm like, all right, well, how does that client even know that it helped them? That client has its own, a, a whole separate ball game and a whole separate story and all this bullshit that comes along with how, you know, it's, it's, it's just so complicated. We could never say that doctor would never be able to truly know how much he helped that client. Um, and how much of it had to do with other things and other variables in, in that life. So I'm not saying that's not valuable research and information. It most definitely is. But, but going through our own struggle in that department helps us become a maestro, helps us become the master in that department. So I didn't listen to these recommendations because they didn't have an L5 disc L5 S1 disc herniation. They never spent weeks unable to walk. They never, they didn't spend 10, 11 months not able to sit in a chair. Um, and I just didn't give a fuck about what they said. And clearly that, uh, paradigm is, is faulty, right? Cause their information that they gave me was very helpful. Had I listened to it back in the day. Um, but it's, it's important to know what we value what what and who we trust right and i learned that about myself i learned the reason i found foundation training for the third the third time i got recommended to it was uh my buddy jason eaton who actually owns the clay company that i recommend to you most of you guys uh, and he had a disc herniation and he told me about foundation training and then i said oh my god i gotta try i gotta check this stuff out so we, we value, I believe, we value the recommendations of people who, are, who have gone through uh, the same or similar journey. So, yeah, I don't even know where, <laughs> I don't even know where I'm taking all of this, um, but it's just been a very uh, beautiful illustration of, see, my mercury journey and my depression and my panic and my anxiety was very unclear. I, it was a, a cloud, a blur. It was three and a half years of being in a clothes dryer. It was very rare that I can take a step back and say, wow, I learned this because of that. And I learned this because of that. I could take the whole journey and say, wow, I learned so much from that journey. But it's very hard for me to go individually that instance or that instance and say I learned anything. It was all just a fucking chaos. But now that I'm clear headed during this back injury, I'm like putting all the pieces together of life and of journeys and of struggles and of the hero's journey and like seeing so fucking clearly how these challenges make us to uh, make us better. And, and, and I'm also realizing that Postural issues are another epidemic, right? The universe, is, I'm like a canary in the coal mine is the way, I, uh, under, the way I understand it. And if you don't know what that saying means, maybe half of you do and half of you don't. I didn't know what it meant until like three years ago. They used to send a canary down in the coal mine and if the canary died, then they know that it had levels of toxic gases and they shouldn't go down there to mine. And if the canary came out alive, then they could go mine. So. I feel that me, along with other sensitive beings on this planet, are canaries in the coal mine where we get sick first. And then we come back and say, hey, universe, hey, humans, don't fucking burn those coal-fired plants. Don't put mercury in your teeth. Trust me, you don't want to do that. It could lead to something bad. And, and that's where, that's what, what I feel like I am. So first it was this toxicity thing, and uh, of course that's still my main 
uh, field and my main uh, passion and expertise, but I have this new thing coming online, making me even a more wholesome healer and a more complete total package, which is learning about the posture and about the nervous system, the spine and the discs and the, all of the tendons and the ligaments and trigger points. And, 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 I'm, and I'm, I have no choice but to become a master in this right now. Um, it's, I, whether I like it or not is irrelevant. I know it's my only way I'll be able to sit in a chair ever again <laughs> is to learn this and master it. And of course, I've had years of poor posture and years of sitting and slouching and texting and years of jujitsu and fighting and wrestling. So uh, on top of that, I'm very sensitive. So I'll be, I'm a canary in a coal mine, meaning I believe an epidemic is coming when it comes to postural issues. If it's not, all, maybe it's already here. You know, I, I see teenagers and I gotta be honest, they look like a different species. People who were born in like after 2000, they literally look like a different species because they, not everyone, but a, a lot of them, especially wealthy ones, wealthy children. Uh, why? Because I, I don't know, I guess they don't work. I guess they're just more spoiled. Uh, maybe this is just a stereotype, but, but I've seen time and time again, these children, everything is hunched over. It's like their whole posture is like this, even when they're walking. And, I, and I'm like, holy shit, are we morphing into like this alien that's merged with a cell phone and like we're becoming adapted to a cell phone as much as possible? And, and so those postural issues are, I believe, going to become an epidemic because of sitting and people not knowing how to do anything correctly in terms of posture. And, and of course, these postural issues affect the nervous system, affect detoxification, affect the health of the spine and the health of the brain and the circuitry and um, nerves, you know, so this is connected to detoxification. This is connected to health and vitality. It's all one really. But anyway, that's my, my new, uh, my new passion right now. Um, you probably haven't heard a lot from me in the world of detox in the past few weeks because I'm just diving deep into structural, uh, postural uh, knowledge of the body and of the spine. And um, so, yeah, uh, I check, you can check out Egoscue, e E-G-O-S-Q-U-E, and also uh, foundation training. And I'm checking out something new in a, in a little while uh, I forget the name of it, but I'm going for a session in a week. Um, and uh, yeah, the main message here is, well, number one, this is my therapy session, right? I, I'm, I'm, I'm talking, I'm getting my stuff out to the world and somehow helping people in the, in the process. Um, so this is just a flow of words for me. I don't have a, an agenda or a preaching lesson here for this video, but um, you know, I just had this deep realization about who we listen to along the journey and, uh, yeah. And when someone gives you a recommendation, it's like, especially someone with integrity, which the other two people had integrity that told me about it, give it, a, give it a, a go, you know? And, and if you don't, just know that with relentless pursuit and okay, here's another thing I wanted to touch on. I've seen, I've seen these, these, uh, stories online on, on forums about whatever the illness may be. People saying I had this for decades. I had Lyme disease for 20 years. I've been sick for 20 years. I've been depressed for 30 years. I've had this back injury for 12 years. Okay. Look, I don't know their whole story. But all I can tell you is that with my willpower and what I do when I'm fucking trying to fix something or trying to help myself, I'm a freight train. I don't fucking stop. I research all day. I talk to anyone who I can talk to. I experiment with everything. I spend thousands of dollars on anything. And if I waste money, I waste money. I don't, money is in, is, it's a fucking paper. I want my health. I always want my health. So, I, I use this, this 
force that I've carved and developed. It's like this, 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 uh, I can't know how to explain it. It's this willpower. Like, like I'm going into a jujitsu fight of like, I'm going to fucking accomplish this and I'm going to do it in half the time that everyone else does it in. And that's how I was with, with my back injury. And through doing that, and I'm still recovering, I'm not, I haven't come out the other side yet, but through doing that, you end up getting things coming into your field. It's like when you set that level of intention to the planet and to yourself and to your spirit, and you set that intention where it's like every day you're spending hours to, trying to figure out the answer, the universe will throw these things in your field. And you may miss it the first time. You may miss it the second time. Eventually, that universe is going to put it in your field again. And it, so like maybe gut binders, right? So if, you're, if we can translate this to the chronic illness journey, maybe you've heard of these gut binders like charcoal and zeolite and clay and takasumi and makaidosan, and you're just like, ah, I don't know about these things. Well, the universe will keep throwing this in your way. Maybe you're supposed to be vegan for six months. The universe will throw veganism your way. Maybe you're supposed to be juicing or juice fasting, or maybe you should be chelating, or maybe you should be doing parasites or working on your liver or working on cleaning your kidneys or cleaning your, um, your lymphatic system or cleaning your skin, all of the different ways that we detox the body. Maybe you need magnesium. Maybe you're super nutrient deficient in lithium orotate and your nervous system is on fire. And all of these different nuances that we encounter along the way, the universe will throw it in you again, throw it in you again. If, if you're on the path, if you're on the path, if you stray from your path, and you start getting lazy or stop giving out your intentions and your antennae are no longer up, right? For this journey, for this particular thing you're trying to fix, if you drop your antenna and you're just like, oh, maybe I'll just go drink some beer. Maybe I'll just go talk to some more women and get laid and then I'll feel better. Maybe I'll just jerk off more and I'll sleep. Maybe I'll just watch movies. Well, then the universe is gonna stop. You put your antenna up and the universe is every day, things coming at you. Some may be bullshit, some may not work for you. Keep trying, keep going, keep moving forward with relentless tenacity and you cannot lose. You simply cannot lose. It's not possible with your willpower. Your willpower is God. <laughs> I, seriously, your willpower is God energy. You can do anything with that willpower. All right, that's my spiel for the night. Hope you enjoyed the show and leave me a comment below. Let me know if you have any recommendations for disc herniations, back injuries, my antenna are up. Waiting for your information to come my way. Leave me a comment if you liked the video, if it helped you, and uh, tell me what you ate for breakfast. And uh, yeah, have a beautiful night. Make sure you give me a like, and hit that subscribe button, and hit that notification button. By the way, I'm almost at 16,000 subscribers. Holy shit. Thank you guys. I hit a million views last week. The Detox Dudes is blowing up. All I got to do is stay focused on my art, stay focused on my health, stay focused on my center, and all the magic happens. It's not about trying to be this perfect teacher or trying to, you know, convey this certain message or teach or preach. You got to do this, guys. You got to do that, guys. It's just, hello, I'm Josh. Take it or leave it. Alrighty, peace.